Nathaniel Lewis, Board Trustee. Penny Robinson, Trustee. Rand Swift, Board Trustee. Wanda Cook Robinson, Superintendent. Debbie Trump, Associate Superintendent for Administrative Services. David Turner, Associate Superintendent for Human Resources and Labor Relations. Linda Wood, Associate Superintendent for Instruction. And uh, taking a record of our proceedings tonight is Mr. Cole Christian and handling audio video duties uh, in the back of the room. Uh, Mr. Paul Rett Anderson. Uh, and back on video, we have Chuck Cassis. And on audio, we have Ariana Dykes. Um, why is it strange? We don't have our Susan Rett tonight, but um, Mr. Lewis, if you could lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Canada, 
New Mexico, and every state in the United States. Our chapter complete, competed in the Chapter Awards program. The Chapter Awards program is designed to see what school has the best organizational skills. In any big organization, organizational skills are very important. Poor organizational skills make people less efficient and less effective in any business, and that makes the employers do not like that. Part of our requirement for the chapter awards was to present 36 events in a book that Ms. Rizek is holding that outline how we demonstrate membership development, promotion, and political re uh, relations, professionally responsible, and also how we are community oriented, experienced leaders, and academically prepared. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to do just a short excerpt of what we did to the, what we showed for the judges. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Finley. And we represent the South Atlanta Decca chapter. We're here today to walk you through our goals and events of this 2011 to 2012 school year. This year, our chapter has been centered around the overall theme of passionate, persistent, and professionally driven. Our, this year, we have shown our passion for the community, persistence through our school store products and services and events, and our professionalism through encounters with high-ranked business professionals. Our many events, which included soup kitchen visits, a trip to the North American International Auto Show, and also meetings with our executive board allowed us to meet our goals so I bring back to both our school and the community. And this is our board that we have made up. We, uh, we do a red day, which is basically for heart disease and women. Since most, most of our faculty is women, we really like to do the red day because it shows them you know, that we care about them and that we want to give them information about heart disease. We did the teen campaign because in everybody's life, somebody has siblings or parents or something that has cancer, and we want to know what, how we can help you guys to, you know, achieve that and get the knowledge, get you to know about cancer. We did the soup kitchen visit, where we go out and go to the kitchen and um, help those poor and homeless. Our meetings with our advisory board, the uh, trip to the North American International Auto Show, and then also we met Mr. Paul Lance, the CEO of Imagine Entertainment Inc. And these are our goals to provide professional opportunities to develop marketing skills with local industry specialists, to provide community outreach experiences for South Atlanta Second members linking marketing skills with passion experiences, to provide our members with relevant professional development through DECA conferences, competition, and professional development, and to be relentless in our effort to provide a positive image of our chapter within the Lake of School and community. And now Austin will talk to you also about our DECA chapter. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. My name is Austin Norris, and I'm here today to express to you how much the South Atlanta DECA chapter has changed my personal life and my life at South Atlanta High School. Our DECA chapter had many goals that we achieved this year, but I would say that the most important ones were winning first place at uh, state and international competition for our chapter awards program and becoming a closer and larger chapter. To me, DEC is not just a uh, marketing organization, but second family and a group of students who are passionate about what they do. This year, we hosted many events, which included our annual hike night and uh, I'd like to go through some of the conferences that we went to. We started with the uh, Reading Leadership and Development Conference conference in downtown Detroit where we learned what a leader is and how to become one. Next, we went to the Sports Entertainment Conference in Orlando, Florida, and ended our year with the uh, International Career and Development Conference in Salt Lake City, Utah, where we, met, where we were spoken to by guest speakers, which included the CEO of Men's Warehouse. I want to thank my parents and the school board for allowing us the opportunity to go to all these conferences and all these trips and for the support that we could get nowhere else. Thank you.
want to congratulate you um, for another uh, great year with uh, DECA. Um, and, you know, even though I know you're a graduate and, uh, you know, older, older students, uh, still I want to know, did you uh, have anybody, any, did you bring your parents here with you tonight? Or, it, they, they, you know, the older they get, the less they want to <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know how that goes, but. You know, my parents are not here today. My mom is actually going shopping for my open house. But, <laughs> she <knows laughs> but she knows about this, and she's very proud. And basically, that could really help me, because now I'll be going to Europe next week with the uh, People to People Student Ambassador Program. And also, I will be continuing my education at Texas A&M, studying in business management and marketing because of DECA.
caring about education because there's a lot of people who try and try, but they don't make it over the 3.0 grade point average. And you know, I just I'm just in tune with education, and I um I like to again I like the service we do and. Like Kyla said, we participated in the conference, the state conference, and what it is is where we um, NHSs and student councils from around the state we gather together and um, propose ideas that propose different programs that we can implement in our schools to make the school just an all-around better place. And like I said again, I just you know, I'm just I just love NHS. I, I really do. <laughs> Mrs. Amy Gibson, and I too love NHS, and I have to say that I did not pay them to say that. We are a very family-oriented group. Um, we do a lot, as the kids have said, and but we're passionate about it. It's not just we have to, it's we want to, and I think that's what's really different about this group um, is that we just take on so many things because we're so impassioned about different projects, and we inspire each other. So. Um, just to let you know that we apologize for the seniors who could not be here tonight. They were all acknowledged, um, and uh, they send their apologies, but many of them had internships, and some of them have already started school. I mean, they're on their way. So I wanted just to say thank you for acknowledging them. Um, we are here tonight just to let you know about the fact that we won the Award of Excellence at that state conference, and what that is, we had to propose all of the things that we do in a year, we had to evaluate what those things were and how we felt about them and how our goals were met. And we had to really give a very thorough evaluation about an 80-page document. And in that document, we had to also highlight photos and highlight the things that um, you know, really make our, our NHS unique. And what was wonderful, again, was that we are the only NHS in the entire state of Michigan to win that award um, for the second year in a row. So we're very <laughs> It's not about an award, it's about the projects that we do. Uh, one project really specifically we wanted to highlight this year is something we're very impassioned about. We helped the Southfield Oakland Shelter. Um, we called it Box City and we worked along with Bernie Middle School and Mrs. Hamler and her, and her uh, group, her leader group over there. And we just had a wonderful 12 hour uh, initiative where we came together and thought as a school, as two schools coming together with one mind and one accord, what we could do to bring that back into our community. So we had a wonderful showing and we did a huge donation drive for the whole community. Um, and it was very um, outstanding and the South Oakland Shelter was very pleased with us. So I would just like to say thank you to anyone who participated in that. And also for the Relay for Life, we always do that because we're so impassioned about that as well. Um, and if you ever want to walk, please see me. I'm Amy Gibson at Southfield Lathrop, and we, was glad, we would be glad to have you join us. We uh, participate every year, and we have been, in the last two years, the highest young team um, for the money coming in. So we're very proud of that, too. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoy your evening.
Wow, this is just uh, stop for the later of uh, evening here at the board meeting. <laughs> Next we have Kiana Ingram, South Carolina Junior, track and field athlete. Kiana competed in the Division I State Track and Field Championships on June 2nd. She competed in the high jump along with 37 other athletes from across Michigan that qualified for the event. <coughs> at the end of the competition, Kiana was not only the Division I State Champion, but she equaled the state meet record of 5 feet 9 inches. She is the only school district athlete to win a state championship in track and field this year. Kiana's effort to tie the record makes her the only Lathrop uh, athlete to ever hold a state record in track and field. Kiana's jump of 5 foot 9 inches would have placed her sixth in the Big Ten Outdoor Championships this year. Congratulations, Kiana.
President Buchanan, I recognize that there are important things that are going to happen tonight, but I do thank mm -hmm. you for having a few minutes to present this award here. For the last quarter century, we have almost a quarter century, we have presented this award in Lansing, which was excellent for the uh, worthy awardees having an opportunity to share what they do with other middle city school districts and uh, who's good professional development. But last year we realized perhaps a better way to do this is to present at the local school district where the worthy awardees can receive the honor and recognition that they truly deserve. And so it's a pleasure to be here. And I will tell you that this award is presented by Middle Cities Education Association. Southfield first became a member of Middle Cities Education Association in 1980. And it is an association of 33 urban school districts across the state. And uh, it is not a coincidence, I suppose, that uh, Dr. Cook Robinson is our president this year. Uh, it all fits. And the award itself is a long award. We call it the Muse Award. The title of it is Dr. Robert Muse and Patricia Excellence in Leadership Award. A lot. And uh, it is provided, it is awarded to schools that have excellent leadership in school improvement and improvement that's reflected in demonstrated skill improvement with the, uh, with the students. Uh, it is something that we put into place in 1988 when Dr. Muse uh, retired from being the executive director of Middle City's Education Association. So how does this process work? What <coughs> happens is Ms. Williams puts in a rather comprehensive application and we don't review that application. We bring in outside experts to take a look at the uh, application and we tell them to create a threshold of excellence in the criteria that's in the uh, application and we say to them, if no schools reach that threshold, you don't have to make that award. So perhaps won't be a big surprise to find out that in the last quarter century, we've only made this award 50 times. Mm -hmm. And that we've had two awardees this year. One of them is an elementary school, <coughs> and then your university high school academy. What's notable is the last time we had a high school receive this award because it is more difficult for a high school than it is in elementary and middle school was in 1998, Port Huron High School. So this is quite an award. And before I provide a couple of tokens of recognition to you, uh, I'd like to read to you from a press release and then something that our panel experts said, if I could only take a second. So from the press release, uh, a quote is, the Southfield Community School is a leader in education in Michigan. Making significant gains in student achievement is often especially difficult in high schools. The educators, students, and parents at University High School Academy are clearly committed to high quality practices and always strive to improve. Their dedication to student success is exemplified by their work, and we are proud to highlight their achievement. And I'd be really interested if I can share with you about uh, the U, some of the things that the evaluators said. The school improvement experts who evaluated the applications for the award were impressed by UHS's efforts, especially in three areas. The strong professional learning uh, community created by the principal and the staff, the effective embedded professional development, the use of data to inform decision making. One of the evaluators said in, the words, in these words, it's a pretty big honor to receive this award. And so, beyond just the, uh, this presentation tonight, and the press releases. We have, as I said, a few tokens of appreciation and I'll turn it over to Ms. Williams. One token of recognition, I said appreciation, I meant recognition, is this rather handsome plaque. I should go like this and bring it closer to the <laughs> And it says, uh, the Robert Patricia Youth Excellence Leadership Award presented to University High School Academy in Southfield Public Schools by Middle City Education Association. <laughs> Congratulations.
Studies Association for recognizing University High School. Um, on behalf of our students, our staff, our parents, um, we work very hard to um, produce the application that you receive and to actually be able to um, show you the data and the results. So it's nice to have that work recognized because we spend a tremendous, tremendous amount of time looking at data. Um, it's always uh, an honor to represent your school district and to um, bring some recognition to Southwood Public Schools. So we're just, we're humbled, we're honored, and we just plan to continue to um, keeping on the track of using data and improving student performance. Thank you. Thank you. On May 9th of this year, we had our partnership breakfast. At that breakfast, we gave for the first time the Superintendent's Award. Our honorees, both of them, were out of the country at the time. And so we'd like to give them their award this evening. The award, and this is the first, Superintendent's Award, will go to Mr. David Turner and Mr. Eugene Novacek. Both are Southfield High alumni, and their company is Ecosystem. Now, their company creates software that's used in the media industry. Channel 7, Channel 4. Um, it's an industry standard. It's used all over the world. And this company has donated the software, the training, and the maintenance to Southfield Public Schools for over the last 15 years. I'd like to invite Mr. Turner up to the podium. He's with us this evening. Broadcasting, which I have been in broadcasting pretty much since I left high school. 
I've you know, gotten engineering degrees and done all kinds of engineering work, but my love's always been broadcasting. And when uh, Mr. Novacek and I crossed paths and put the company together, creating software for broadcasting, it was a natural fit to give back to WSHJ, which was the genesis of where it all started. The things that I got involved in there had me thinking about you know, what was going to make this industry better. And as we went down the road and created these products and moved them out around the world, um, it was just so gratifying to be able to give back in such a direct way to the genesis that started the whole thing. We were given a broadcast product back to a broadcast facility that inspired me to think about ideas that over the course of 30 some years created the stuff that we needed to have. So it's, it's very gratifying that we're able to do this and we certainly are going to continue to do it. We want WSHJ to survive and be the resource that it was for us and to be able to inspire young minds like it did for us so many years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Did not bring my mother, uh, <laughs> but, but my 92-year-old mother still lives in Southfield, a mile down the road, and I saw her on the way over here tonight. And she says, "Go Jays." <laughs> Thank you for everything. 
and to this board. To the because board they supported, they supported that decision. I was saying to you first, but I'm, I'm talking to the board too. <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much because I never thought that I'd be able to make it to college and keep going. And I am the first person out of my family to go to college and graduate from high school.
Um, it was a really great experience for us all, a great um, cultural learning experience that I think is priceless. And every student within the district and within more school districts needs to have. Um, so this conference has a lot of learning opportunities. I know you're turning around and see the PowerPoint. It has a lot of learning opportunities. Students from the Detroit area, Metro Detroit area, work in collaboration with students from Canada, including Windsor and the greater Toronto area, to basically share their cultural views and ideas and just bond together and learn different perspectives from each other's um, culture and where they come from. Another learning experience. <laughs> <laughs> this conference was put together by three great gentlemen, um, Dr. Cecil Houston, um, the Dean of Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, John Solarski, a high school counselor, and Dave Watkins, a history teacher. All three of them worked together, and they've been working diligently since 2004 to put on a conference every year for students from Michigan and the greater Detroit area and students from Canada. Their first conference was in 2004, and the theme was Earth. Yeah, the theme was, um, I mean, my bad, 2005 was the second conference, and the theme was Back to Your Future, an African Diaspora Youth Conference. They put on the conference again in 2006, an even greater success, which was the Pathway to Success, an African Diaspora Youth Conference. And they had a lot of great people there to speak. Um, the Honorable Judge Lloyd Dean served as keynote speaker in 2006, and even more students showed up. To that, I mean, 200 students <laughs> um, came for that year. The following year, the theme was History and Knowledge Equals Power. The keynote speaker for that was Al, um, the Saint, was Al St. Louis, the founder and CEO of When Words Are Spoken. More students showed up. Each year, it gets better and better. You know, this year, um, gee, I don't know, but 500 students came, roughly. It was quite a lot. So every year, to get more and more students involved. In 2009, the theme was Hip Hope, History, Influence, and Purpose. In the following year, in 2010, the theme was Media, More Than Meets the Eye. And in 2011, this past year, the theme was Mapping Me. Mapping Me, I Am Who I Say I Am. And the speakers included Charles Pugh, the journalist and president of the Detroit City Council, and Trey Anthony, a Toronto-based award-winning playwright and television and theater producer. And like I said, they try to incorporate people from not only the Detroit, or not only Canada, not only Canada but also Detroit, because it's a joint um, a joint learning experience. So they tried to make sure they have people from America and Canada working together to just infuse ideas from both countries. Okay, so my name is Andrew Allen once again. Good evening to everyone. And the theme for this year's African Diaspora Conference was Shosaloba. It's African or nowhere.
this was one of the historic sites that we first went to, the John Freeman Memorial Historic Site in Underground Railroad Museum, <coughs> where the, main, uh, the speaker that was there was the great great grandson of this slave from Africa. And what we learned from that was that you should be proud of who you really are on the inside from both now to previous years. So these are pictures of when we first got here. speaker with the mega uh, the person with the megaphone was the great grandson of this plantation person and he was speaking about how his great grandfather made this plantation and owned his land to save slaves and make them free. It was a sign and they also had a freedom bill which when you rang it that was indicating that you were on your journey to become free. The picture there was showing one on the left is a middle passage. It was just a display of how people, how slaves were brought here to America, how they were shipped over here. And the one to the right was a historical cemetery for all the slaves that died on this plantation trying to be So it established Street First Baptist Church. That was the second site that we went to when we came to Canada. And it was built church in Canada, and they held many fugitive slaves, and this whole church was built by slaves. Everything was handmade. Um, that was a sign that described how the church was built, and it also was written both in English and in French. This is us going inside. On the right, there's a student of ours that was playing a piano, playing a gospel. underneath the church where they had held African slaves where they could hide from um, bounty hunters and slave masters when they came to come live with them. And the picture on the left was also a tunnel where they could go outside where they could escape. And this sign in here was an auction sign where they had slaves being shipped off and they had different variations of prices of slaves such as condition of health within one time. And this is roughly the sam first sandwich of the Baptist Church. These were some sites that we saw when we were coming to Windsor. That was the bridge that connects us all together and the environment around it. So this was our schedule the first day. We went straight to work. We went to the first museum, the first site that we got to. We got to the um, university. We ate and we started going off into our icebreaker groups where we were all paired up with different people, not the that we had from our school, and we got to do a skit, which my group did, we did, we had storytelling, so we had to tell a story about how Africans were displayed and certain um, characteristics like how they are depicted as lazy and um, not fit for work. So the next day we had a very packed day, we went to breakfast and went straight to work. Um, we had our mayor, uh, Brenda Lawrence, come and speak to us. So she was our keynote, but our keynote speaker there. And the history of diaspora. Um, what she spoke about was that you should, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't deteriorate from what your, what what you are really on the inside. You shouldn't be persuaded by anybody. And she really got to a lot of people. All the African Canadians respected her, and they she really touched a lot of a lot of people there. So this is her speaking to all of us. These are some of the people that were around her, and there's also Dr. Andrew Allen, who was a part of making this conference become what it is today. Yeah.
ourselves of being exploited to so much different di uh, diversity. We were just appalled and we were just amazed by how they just, how our actors were, how different they are. But even though they're different, they're still the same to us. They're still African. They're still the same. They are no different from us. And in our last day here at Toronto, we ate breakfast and we left. We didn't come straight home. We went to the Boston National Historic Site Museum in Boston, Ontario. So the Boston National Historic Site and Museum was founded by Reverend William Kane in 1849, where he brought 15 plays and from Louisiana to Canada for freedom. And he <laughs> and this is us leaving from the University of Windsor to Fox. Over there to the right is the first school that was built there. Um, these are where all the children of Africa, of all the African children came and learned how to write, speak, do math. This was the inside of the school, and you can see it's quite old fashioned from what our stuff is. The desks are all wooden. There's, I believe, that's a furnace in the middle of the classroom. There wasn't really any lighting, and you could tell when we went inside, the bricks were like made differently. Like, you could tell how the different structures were and how everything was handmade. And you see us being studious by working on plates of blackboard. Right now, what the teacher had told us. That's working once again. <coughs> to the left was the picture of the community of Boston, of the people that lived there. It wasn't just blacks or Africans, there was all around, there was all types of people that lived there. And then on the end, there was the house we went inside and they showed us all the artifacts that Africans were assigned to, like, on to the right, but one of our students was an auction stand, where it's where the slaves were chained together, and they were auctioned off, and some were separated from others, and some were more uh, more detailed stuff. Um, to the right was the barn that we went to, where they had the gardening tools, everything was handmade and stuff, and that's where they did their plantation work in the crop. And to the left, if you look behind, there's like some type of quilt, which was sewn together to show where the Africans needed to go, so it had like all the constellations and stuff. More pictures with them. I do not know what that contraction did to the left, so. <laughs> uh, coming out of the farm. Within the house, um, the house was back then. It seemed like a mansion to us. It's just like a shed, but they had a lot of house appliances. Like you can see to the left, there's like a pot and whatnot. And to the right, I don't remember what that is. I think it was churning butter or something. Yeah. <laughs> and uniting the children of diaspora. Everyone that came to the conference, we and all the parents and the sponsors and the community that. Us. We were very thankful that we were able to go on this wonderful experience. This has opened our eyes up to a lot of things, and most of us want to know where our families came from. So some of us are making a summer program, like a summer project for ourselves to find out where our roots really came from. And these are all the sponsors, organizations, and partners that we work with that donated money to us. We thank you very much. Opening up the eyes of the more younger minds, and we all 
Bradshaw. I go to Southfield High School. And I wanted to share that I enjoyed going to the African Diaspora Conference because it gave me the opportunity to meet more people, make friends, but also get to know one, one another. And I find that to be very educational and very exciting. And I had a real good time.
and I am also a senior at University High School Academy next year. And I just like to say that I really, really enjoy the conference. It's a lot of fun, and you really learn a lot. And it's not only about the classes that you go through with the speakers, though they were wonderful. We had a lot of fun when we were broken up into two groups, and we had to put together skits. And really, a lot of the enrichment that you get is from talking to the fellows, because really, as similar as you think that African, that African Canadians may be, since that they were slaves that came from America just like us that really their history and their culture they are, they are a lot more connected to and how they take that into their futures and they involve that into their higher education and I also want to do that. So. Hello everyone, my name is Amber Haas. I also attend University High School Academy um, as an upcoming senior. Um, the African Diaspora Conference was really um, an amazing experience for me. Um, I think it benefited all by just um, allowing us to be more open-minded and um, getting to know new people and being outgoing. I think the breakout sessions were all about issues that affected all of us, not only African Americans, but African Canadians. And I think they all just kind of um, related to us and the problems with teenagers. Um, the program reached out to not only cities in Canada, but cities or just Detroit in the United States. Um, and overall, I think the program was really, it was impactful, I think. We can all say. Um, and I hope to also go next year. Thank you very much. Thank you.
the academic success that our son had, but also to recognize uh, one of his teachers in middle school, uh, Mr. Robert Weiner, who uh, took a small group of kids who, who all had the same difficulties and helped them overcome those challenges. And uh, without, without that, that work that was done in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade at Levy Middle School in a small room, uh, which really was not actually a classroom, it was a closet. Um, there were a group of maybe seven, uh, eight kids, eight kids. Uh, and they, they, um, they worked hard for those three years, and by the time Brent was finished uh, with middle school, he was, in fact, reading at a ninth grade level. Uh, his, his challenges did not end uh, there. Of course, he had, had difficulties in, in high school, and uh, there, were, there were many instances where we were not sure that he was going to graduate from high school on time. And, uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, we, we, we worked uh, with uh, college applications, and this is, this is the truth. Um, we filed 20 college applications that he had. Take your time. Nineteen rejections. One school accepted him, and that was Ohio Northern. They were the ones who gave him the chance. And um, he worked hard. Uh, there were many, many situations uh, in college where we weren't sure if he was going to finish. It took five years for him to complete his uh, degree. He did um, get a degree in business administration with a concentration in marketing.
I received that email on one of those days when I had been reading the notes from Lansing and the governor had just given us another round of cuts. And when I read that email encouraging me to continue doing the things that we had done for your son, I wanted the board and the community to hear that. So thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask Ms. Ruthie Johnson to come up to the podium. At the last board meeting, we had parents from the Bussey Center come and they had an issue that their child had been hurt on the playground and they had not been notified as what they shared with us. And so the board um, committed to having that investigation. Ms. Ruthie Johnson is our parent student liaison. She works on behalf of the parents and the students. She has investigated this situation and has an update report to the board this evening. Superintendent Cook Robinson, um, President and board, staff, and community. Uh, as a result of the complaint that was levied by a parent uh, at the last meeting, uh, we found that uh, indeed the child had been injured. Uh, however, the parent was um, the parent, the mother's father picked the child up. So the parent, the father was in, was informed that there would have been an injury that he, the child was hopping around on one foot. So he, he wasn't told that the foot or toe was broken because they didn't know. And um, the teacher did not call the parent that particular evening, but she did tell his father when he picked up the child. The next morning, she called the mother at her job. Uh, of course, the mother was not there, but she left a message explaining what had happened. The child had been uh, having a meltdown and had uh, fell, had fallen down on, uh, out in the hallway and had fallen on his foot, on his leg. Um, but when she called that morning, she didn't get the parents, but she left a message, and then she called later on in the evening and left a message for the parents. Um, that, um, the next day she spoke to the parent on the phone and explained it to her. Um, we regret that, you know, the parent's uh, uh, complaint was that she was not notified, but we do know that uh, the grandfather was informed about it the day that he picked up the young child. So I hope this provides some clarification to the parent's complaint at the last meeting. Thank you. And now we continue with the report on my cabinet. Good evening. Um, first tonight, Katrina Peruzzi is here from Champions to tell us about an award that they were given. Good evening. Good evening. Dr. Monica Gravison. Board. We're very excited. Uh, Champions recently rolled out a um, contest called Project Heart, and it was based in our region over 197 schools. And the contest was based on showing a true passion for our children, our customer, and our clients. It was based on, if the success was measured and evaluated based on HEART, the acronym was H, what was happening in our program. The E was uh, the evidence of a long-term child-driven project. The A was achieving 80% retention of our children to ensure that we're providing a quality program and some customer satisfaction. R was significant read right now and literacy program enhancements into our programs. And T was uh, ensuring that we had top performing teachers um, at our program. And we are proud to present that Magnolia Preschool was chosen at, um, out of the 197 schools for this wonderful award. Not only did we receive this award, but we also received over $500 of literacy and program enhancements for the Magnolia Preschool children. Um, our executive director, Kathy Gannon, is uh, the one that oversees the program. And Shannon Strong is also the preschool teacher that was nominated for this award as well. And we wanted to share this award with the South Hill Public School System to show you that we are truly committed to not only um, preparing your children for the future, but we are pleased and honored and blessed to be a partner of your, pro of your um, South Hill Public School District. So we want to uh, provide this award to you, Dr. Wonderful Robinson. And congratulations. Thank you.
year and our proposed budget for the 12-13 year before the board. Um, what I wanted to show you first was just some graphs that were kind of illustrative of what I've been saying over the last few years about what's been happening to not only our school district, but the other school districts in the state and the economy as a whole in Michigan. Okay, what this shows you is since 2006, which is when I came here and I did <laughs> not bring this with me, <laughs> Um, what's happened to our revenues and our expenditures? The blue is the revenues. You'll notice that when I came, we were running around 130, 130 million in revenues here, and we're projecting for the 12-13 year to bring in 12, um, 82 million. So we've fallen off by 36 percent. And what drives that is the pupil count. So how many pupils that you have enrolled in the district? Your property taxes because we're a hold harmless district. So we also levied mills on our residential for that. Um, the state, the portion that the state gives with which we were taken, the state took 470 per pupil away from us last year. So a lot of things have hit us and one other thing that we kind of forget about that happened about three years ago is we were actually South Hills was one of five what they call 20J districts in the state. We had extra money given to us because when Proposal A was put into place it didn't uh, account for all the revenues that we were getting per pupil at that time. So they put a special categorical in the state aid to cover those districts to keep us at the level that we were originally at. No one was supposed to be harmed by proposal A. But what happened is when things got tight in the state about three years ago, they decided to just take that right off the top, which was over three million for our district. So not only have we been hitting hit with all the things that are hitting the other districts, but we've had something specific just to Southfield. So even though we've cut over 90 million since 2006 till now in expenditures, and some of the things that we've done, I have to write it down because this has been going on and on and it's getting so big. Our list of cuts is just astronomical. We've privatized custodial bus, food service, um, security, latchkey. We've um, had staff reductions in all staff all across the district, in administration and unaffiliates, in the teaching staff. Um, we've asked for concessions from all of our union groups and everyone has been coming together on this. We have got the concessions so that we're all sharing this. Um, trying to think of some of the big things. Uh, our legal expense, we brought legal in-house and that saved us thousands of dollars. We've done other cost saving things like putting our checks online, we no longer print them. So we've looked at everything. We've called in every contractor that we used and we've asked them for concessions and they've all been great about that. Also, everyone knows what's going on. But even though we've been able to cut our expenditures by, if you notice the red line, the expenditures are going down also. But what happens is there's things that we have no control of. Our retirement rate every year goes up. That's driven by the state. It's going up. It costs us a million, two million more every year. So if your expenditures were flat from here on out, same staff, same expenditures for supplies, things like that, which we don't have much any of any of that left in our budget anymore. Almost all of our budget is salary and benefits because we have cut every other place that we can. But even if that goes straight all across, you have things hitting you from the outside that make your expenditures go up. So as your revenues are going down, your expenditures are coming up. So all of the cuts that we're making aren't happening fast enough to keep up with, with the, the loss of revenue. So I just thought that this was a good graph. So we've, fallen, we've, we've lost $45 million in revenue in the last five years. The pupil left to eat. A lot of what's happened is the pupil left to eat. You get, we're, what the state says we get is $10,821 per pupil. We're actually only bringing in about 10,121 per pupil because we're losing about $700 per pupil of our state or of our whole harmless revenues that we levy at the mills on our um, residents here in Southfield. But the property values have fallen to such an extent that even though we levy the mills, we're not producing enough money to get our full um, per pupil allotment from the state. So that's costing us about $5 million a year in revenue that we're losing. And I don't know that that's going to stop or come back up, but also the, the people have fallen off and that outward migration. Um, it's not that we're losing people to other schools, but that we're losing them from the state and that we're losing them because of the birth rate. So the whole bell curve of the baby boomers is now going away and so it's coming so that we have less and less of the younger children and more of an older population. So that affects us. So unless something's done to proposal A so that they change the way we're funded, I don't know when this is going to happen. And this again is the 
property values, just showing, you know, in a graph form, you can see how fast that's falling up. Now, what they're projecting is that it will level out. They were projecting another 7% loss of uh, value this next year, but then hopefully it should start slowing down. They don't project it to come back up to the levels where it was just last so three years ago for about another 15, 20 years. So that's not going to recoup. So we, we have been living within our means. The board and the superintendent have made the promise to the, the city of South Coast, the residents, that we wouldn't raise our levy, and we have not. So we have been trying very hard to live within our means. But you can see that a lot of this is just happening so fast that we've made all the cuts that, um, all the cuts that I can think of at this point. But, you know, if we're going forward, we'll, we'll, we'll keep fighting a good fight. So, um, so I said not the end here to put up some happy pictures of the, of the children. <laughs> and if you've been here for the whole meeting, you saw that. I mean, I've gone to some awards assemblies. I went to the graduations. We're having in the high 90% graduation rates from all of our high schools. We have got millions of dollars in scholarships. We have scholars in athletics, in the arts, in academics. It's amazing. I mean, I came here tonight. I got teared up a couple times listening to some of the students and things that are happening. So we want you to know that even though you know it looks dire, that we'll make it through this. You know, we're 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 committed to doing what we have to do to get this balanced budget, and we were able to do that again for 12-13, and we'll keep going forward in the same vein. Now and we still have four vacancies. 
Um, we're offering professional development to our staff, and we also are offering before and after school care for the K-8 program. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our curriculum, too. We do have a prescribed curriculum. Because our program is such in such a short amount of time, it's six weeks, and we have a lot to accomplish in a little bit of time. So what we did, we took our um, MEEP analysis from across the district, and we looked at it grade by grade, and that's pretty much what we're going to use as our guide for the next six weeks. We're going to break that down into little bite-sized chunks, and each week, um, the, our teachers will be attacking one of those deficits that was identified according to the data analysis. Our class sizes are also a very important component to our program. We are working very uh, diligently to keep them 20 or uh, with 20 students or less. Right now, we're hovering right around that point, so we're doing a good job. We've also created student schedules to help the day flow, which includes um, beginning the day at 8 o'clock with breakfast. And we have a chunk of time, in the, a block in the morning for language arts and math. We're also going to um, have a lunch, have free lunch for the students. The afternoon will be spent with science and technology. This will also include progress reports and report cards. And last but not least, field trips. We plan to attend the Detroit Zoo, Greenville Village, the movie, and roller skating. And now for our middle school intervention and high school program. The middle school intervention program will offer students exiting grades 6 through 8 an opportunity to meet academic credit requirements that were not met during the school year in English, Science, Language Arts, and Math. Students enrolled in the high school program will have the option to enroll in classes for acceleration, credit recovery, or grade replacement. The traditional credit recovery classes are offered in a classroom setting. Students that successfully complete the classes will earn half a credit and meet the Michigan Merit curriculum requirements. Students enrolled in the grade replacement classes must earn 75% proficiency or higher on their summer school final exam in order for the grade replacement to apply. Students can also enroll, enroll in our accelerated program to fulfill the Michigan Merit curriculum requirements. This will allow for additional capacity in a student's schedule to take additional or more rigorous courses throughout the school year. Students enrolled in the middle school intervention program and the high school program must attend the entire session and earn a passing grade in their respective courses. The enrollment for the middle school and high school program, the numbers are still coming in. I expect to offer two sessions for the middle school intervention program and six to ten classes per session for the high school program. The course offerings include, but are not limited to, students taking classes in algebra, American history, biology, chemistry, Spanish, econ, etc. Progress reports and report cards <coughs> will be given to students um, as they complete the program. The staff for the high school program will consist of one secretary, one security specialist, and approximately six to 12 teachers per session. However, the teacher numbers are contingent upon student enrollment. We are excited about being able to offer these extended learning opportunities to our students. We look forward to sharing our summer success stories with you at the first board meeting. If you find it in your schedule, please feel free to stop by and see how we're doing. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you. And next we have the report of from um, the public. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Um, I will be as brief as possible, keeping in mind that there is May and June to report. Um, May 2012, Busies at full enrollment with 190 students, 53 dropped, 113 waiting on the list. Breakfasts were served 14, 1,465. Lunches that were served 2,051. Snacks that were served 1,494. A monthly average daily attendance is 86%. I'm going to not read the, the events because they've already passed. Uh, Enrollment for fall of 2012, returning applications 44, and new applications are 53. Uh, there are 125 children that will be transitioning to kindergarten in the fall, and 1,800 volunteer hours were recorded. 
PNC Bank donated items to put in the backpacks for children that will be transitioning to kindergarten, crayons, activity books, etc. The budget in May was 69.43% uh, spent. We had a remaining balance of $392,143.09. For the month of June, fully enrolled at 190 students, 53 drops, and 113 on the waiting list. 1,702 breakfasts were served, 2,376 lunches, 1,708 snacks. Monthly average daily attendance was 75%. Uh, Ms. Hill mentioned that the ADA dropped as we enter the end of the school year, attendance seems to drop as well. Uh, 2, 2,100 volunteer hours were recorded. The as far as transportation is concerned, at Bussy, 22 families have signed up for transportation. 34 children had immunization assessments. Uh, 211 families attended the enrollment recruitment fair on May 24th. We had 12 two and a half year olds, 103 year olds, 77 four year olds, and 22 five year olds. Uh, 31 children had dental services provided. Uh, 33 children had vision provided, and 43 students had uh, a hearing test and test. Five were referrals for a total of 48. I do want to mention that on June 2nd, they had their first basketball tournament, and from what I understand, it was a tremendous success, and they plan to do it again next year. There were 35 dads, 20 cheerleaders consisting of moms and Head Start children, 43 spectators, and three referees. Uh, there were two cases of hand, foot, and mouth disease reported. Parents were notified and room sanitized and disinfected. The QIP quality improvement plan was approved by a policy council and the Board of Education and sent to regional office on Thursday, May 31st. Reviewing several data system data management systems, which will also allow us to track, monitor, report, and report required health, dental, and screening, etc. And finally, the fiscal report. Um, as of June 1st, 2012, 77.14% of the uh, grant has been used. Um, $295,972.02 remaining, and we are not required to do a budget amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Um, now we move to action items. There is no unfinished business. At uh, this time, I'll take a motion to open and approve uh, the consent agenda. Second. Are there any questions from the board in regard to the consent agenda? Hearing none, the secretary, you can call the vote. Yes. Trustee Lewis? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Williams? Yes. Vice President Katz? Yes. President Buchanan? Yes. Okay. And just like that, we just paid our bill $8.2 million. So, um, at this time, we take a motion to open and approve Report 50-63, the Oakland IMD Budget Resolution. I move and support it. Is there any discussion on this? Uh, yeah. Mr. President. Um, the Oakland Schools budget has been reviewed by the Oakland County Superintendents Association as well as the Oakland County Business Managers Association, of which Debbie Trent and myself um, are members, and I believe the personnel group as well that they determined. So we have all had an opportunity to review the questions, I'm sorry, to review the budget and to ask questions from varying points of view. And this evening we are recommending that this board support the ISD budget. Do you have an overall total uh, budget item for the amount? Okay, I did either. Just for the, for the public to be aware of what that amount is, it is your money. No, we don't have it, we just have the resolution. We can get that item for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just a resolution, but not an actual dollar But we can get that dollar figure for the board. Okay. But uh, with the board's, uh, with the administration's uh, approval, then uh, if the board is comfortable with uh, the board, then uh, we take the office vote. Thank you. Trustee Poole? Yes. 
Trustee Robinson? Yes. Myself? Yes. Trustee Williams? Yes. Trustee Lewis? Yes. President Katz? Yes. President Buchanan? Yes. Thank you. This time we'll to take a motion to open and approve Report 5064, the Custodial and General Maintenance Services Contract Renewal. So moved. So moved. Okay. Supported. Uh, Ms. Trust. Good evening. Um, in May 2010, when we first awarded EnviroClean our custodial contract, the scope of their contract includes the cleaning of the school building, the snow removal of the sidewalks, and general maintenance tasks and repair of the athletic fields and striping. <coughs> um, that contract at that time was for two years with um, up to three years additional on a year-to-year -year basis. What we're in now is the first year of the additional years after the first two. And so we went back to EnviroClean and we negotiated with them. Like I said before, uh, we've gone to all of our contracts and asked them for concessions. They gave us a 3.9% decrease in their contract amount just because they want to help out and you know be a good partner with South of Public Schools. We have been happy with the work that we're doing. We're working very well with them. So at this point, we're asking you to um, approve a contract with them for one year from July 2012 to June of 2013 with two additional years on a year-to-year -year basis for $2,286,577. Are there any questions from the board? That two point three million dollar figure, that's a per per year dollar amount? Yes it is. Any further questions? The secretary you call for the vote. Yes, thanks. Uh Trustee Robinson? Yes. Myself? Yes. Trustee Williams? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Lewis? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Vice President Katz? Yes. President Buchanan? Yes. Nancy? Thank you. I'll um, take a motion to open and approve Report 1565, <coughs> the addendum to Durham Transportation Agreement. So moved. Second. So moved and supported. Okay. Um, Durham has been a uh, transportation privatized company since uh, 2009 when we first privatized and as you know they have been a great partner for the district. We have been very happy with them and they have come back year after year with um, savings and concessions for us and ways for us to save money. Uh, this year again we went back to them one more time and asked again could they save us any more money and again they wrote to the challenge and they were able to, um, they were supposed to um, be an increase but we've actually stayed the same and then we also got them to come up with a concession by combining a couple of our routes at the high school level which will um, the students will be on the bus just a, a nominal amount of time more but we could save the district almost two hundred thousand dollars by doing that so again we're going with a one-year contract with um, the availability to go out one year after that any questions from the board Hearing none, uh, the secretary would call the vote. Myself? Yes. Trustee Williams? Yes. Trustee Lewis? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Vice President Katz? Yes. President Buchanan? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, I'll take a motion to open and approve for 5066 third party substitute employment services. I move we open with report 5066. It's been moved and supported. Good evening, board. I uh, ask your indulgence because there is a modification to this uh, recommendation uh, previously submitted to the board uh, for uh, an agreement to enter into the agreement that Wayne Risa is under, which uh, would deliver a savings to the district of about seventeen point six seventeen point six thousand dollars by uh, going with their seventeen percent savings that is there. We have been in individual negotiations with. PESG, which is our current provider, and they're going to deliver to us a lower rate uh, than the Wayne Risa rate rate, and we wish to stay there, uh, which will go down to 15.75%. And that is the uh, agreement that we wish to continue with our current provider. So we are staying with PESG? Yes. We were not moving from them. We were just going into a consortium, and we do not need to go into a consortium at this time. Very good. Are there any questions? Hearing none. Secretary, call for the vote, please. Yes. Yeah. Trustee 
Trustee Williams? Yes. Trustee Lewis? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Myself? Yes. Vice President Cass? Yes. President Buchanan? Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, I'll take a motion to open and approve report 5067, the Biotech Hosting Stop Hill Agreement. I move we open 5067. Mr. Trump. Copy. and supported. Mr. Trump. Okay. Biotech is our financial and HR software. Um, we are contracted with St. Clair County RISA for our support and licensing. It saves us quite a bit of money from when we were going alone through California directly through the company and we also get better support through St. Clair County RISA. They have, you know, beyond just being phone support for us, they've actually sent people up here to help out when we've had issues of shortages of staff. They will do training also and they don't charge us any extra for that. So we've been very happy with that partnership with St. Clair County. And it, it also helps with the best practices, our collaboration with other districts. So um, this year they did raise us 20 cents per pupil, which is the first time they've raised it since, I think 2000, I don't remember what year we were with them. We were originally with them back in 2001 and then went on for a few years and then went back about three years ago to them. But this is the first time in the history of it that they've raised it at all. So it's a very nominal amount and we are happy with their service. So we're asking that you renew their contract for one year. Are there any questions from the board? Is there any, um, is it normal that the Lisa is the owner of the server network? I just happen to glaze over that where they would be in charge of the servers. Is that kind of standard? Yes, it is. A lot of the um, or a lot of the regions will do that. They will be the host of the, the they will own the service because it's too cost prohibitive for districts to do this on their own. If you're talking about millions of dollars when you try to get the service and have the backups and all the staff to support that. So by the RISAs and the ISDs doing that, it saves the, the um, local districts um, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars each district. So it is normal for them to do that.
for the many, many needs that our special ed department is in need of and support to complete. Again, the superintendent and I am requesting that approval. Marion Blocker has served in the capacity as a Title I, Title II, Title III contractor and uh, for the past year and a half, or almost two years really, she has really helped to hold down that particular um, area that is very, very important because there's so many elements of compliance that are part of our state and federal funding. Um, this year we're going to move forward and seek a full-time um, employee for the position, but in the interim, I would like to request that we have the security of her services until that person is on board and that person is up to speed. Um, and so that would be up to 40000 It may not be the total 40000 Sandra Screen is another contractor in the Division of Instruction. Um, we are able to recoup uh, as it relates to our psychological services, our speech services, et cetera, um, uh, funding from Medicaid. And we have to have someone that is able and has the credentials to be able to sign off on that and make sure that we're in compliance with the Medicaid billing and also she is helping with IEPs and the compliance with that. Um, again, we are requesting a approval, the superintendent and I. Linda Brown, um, our high school counseling center that started to flourish as a result of her expertise. She uh, worked at the University of Michigan Dearborn, was very instrumental in our partnership uh, with and our partnership development with U of M Dearborn. And she has been uh, very much an integral part of helping our high school career departments to flourish. Um, and so we are asking for that contracted service to be approved again for this year. Joyce Kalaji, um, as we uh, very much uh, do recognize her expertise and the support as it relates to our partners in the district and our partnership council. And we very much would like to um, have her contracted services approved. So those are the services that we uh, wish to bring to you this evening because all of them will be utilized hopefully over the summer as we get ready for the 2012-13 school year. <coughs>
their terms will expire in 2016. After that, those two seats uh, will be uh, uh, up for re-election in 2022. So the, after this election uh, in 2016, uh, they go from 2016 to 2022. Uh, Ms. Katz and Mr. Poole, terms in, in 2014, uh, uh, the next, those seats will run through 2018, but then after that, those seats will expire in 2024. Uh, my term, as well as that of uh, Ms. Robinson, which are due to expire in 2014, will be, uh, after the next election, those seats will uh, expire in, uh, in, they go from 2020. 2026. Very long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Williams, uh, who, Mr. Uh, yeah, Mr. Williams' term in in 2016. Uh, his term will end in the 2022 uh, election year, and that goes from 2022 to 2028. And I know that makes sense to everybody.
we get as close as we can to actual so that we can see what we're going to have going forward into the next year, which was extremely important this year because of the budget depth that we were looking at was $9 million to close for the 12, 13 year. So we actually had to go back and look at every single line in this year's budget to come up with enough fund balance to get us into with our cuts to a balanced budget for 12, 13. So for the 11, 12 Appropriation Act, um, actually, our revenues came out pretty much the same on this division. There were some ups and downs, but we're pretty much on target to where we thought we were going to be. The expenditures, we were able to go back and cut $3.7 million. Now, this year was a little different than um, normal years. We wouldn't be able to cut that much out, but we had a great year as far as the weather. So our utility bills, our heating bills, things like that were way down. So for this year, that was the best, and we can, we can use that money going into the next year. We had to bump it back up for next year because we can't rely on that every year, and you know what fuel costs are looking like. Um, our workman's comp and unemployment, they're based on like a three-year bubble of years before previously what you used. So we finally have come down off of that, and our rates have lowered, so we were able to shave off quite a bit out of the budget for unemployment and workman's comp. Uh, we reduced our sub costs just by... Um, I can't take credit for that at all. That was our HR department working with the unions and the people in the district. And we have actually cut down on the, the usage and also by going through a third party we cut that down. Uh, we didn't fill some positions, which every year we get some savings from this. And it's, it's something that we do um, intentionally at this time of year. If we have, like there's two people in the finance department, if we feel that we can fill in and cover it and save the district money, we do that. So. I think I talked a little bit earlier about the whole, um, the way the district is pulled together to help <coughs> save money for everyone. So no one is whining that, hey, I've got to do more jobs than I normally have. They just, and actually they're coming to work every day with a good attitude and they're doing more jobs, but it's an actual, it was a couple hundred thousand dollars savings just in those two positions and we've had others through the district. Um, Capital outlay, we were able to take a little money out of that by not doing some projects during the year. That's something we'll have to look at going forward. You can't put off paving and roofing and things like that forever, but when money is really tight like this, we went through especially the IT department and we held off on a lot of purchases there. So we're stretching out the turnover on our computers where normally you'd like to be on a three-year, five-year cycle. We've stretched that out for as long as, as we can get any useful life out of them. Um, and then we also have some indirect costs from our grants that we have turned over. So we were able to save off $3.7 million which is very helpful because it keeps our fund balance this year at about $12 million. And going into next year, we're going to use that whole $12 million to balance the budget, so it's a good thing. We started out this year with $18 million from last year. We're using up about six of that, and we should end this year 11-12 with about $12 million in the bank. Um, we also revised the debt service fund and the food service fund just to get closer to actual. The debt service fund is a levy that we... Um, we levy taxes on the, the citizens of Port Huron, or Port Huron, sorry, I can't even tell Southfield, and it can only be used to pay our bonded debt. You can't commingle it with general funds, you can't pay salaries, you can't buy supplies, you can't do anything. It only goes in and comes out to pay the debt. So, and last year, because the property values fell so severely, we actually came up with a deficit in that fund, and we were at a negative. So we had to raise it up a little bit last year, but we're staying steady now and holding on. So that fund looks okay and we'll have enough balance in there to pay the bills for that. The food service fund, again, is making money, which is a great thing. So we privatized they been doing awesome. So we're asking at this time that you approve this second amendment to the Appropriation Act for 11-12. Mm -hmm. I, I got all that, but did you have to turn the air conditioning off tonight? <laughs> 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 we, we do have a fund balance. Yes, for this year we'll be sitting on about $12 million, but then I'm going to do this, this next item, we'll go into where that's going to. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, any further questions? Any number, Secretary, and talk to the vote? Yes. Trustee Lewis? Yes. Trustee Williams? Yes. Myself? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. President Katz? Yes. President Yes. Yeah, I, um, I apologize. I guess due to the heat, I <laughs> jumped uh, the agenda here so we can go back and open the report 5070, the adoption of the 2012 2013 operating budget. Yeah. Still no support. Okay, so we can support it. Um, 
much better order. Okay, for the 12-13 operating budget, our assumptions are, and this is what we get these um, assumptions from different companies, we um, contract with middle cities to do our uh, birth rate, um, turnover, things like that, our pupil count, so that we know they've been very close to being right on with their numbers. Last year they actually were a little high, so we had to go back again and ask them to lower it, because what we don't want to do is assume too many people. What we want to do is go with work pay, so that we have enough money to balance our budget if we get more students, that's great. But um, we're projecting between five and 600 lots of students again for the next year, so that's you know, at $10,000 per year, so it's quite a loss there. Property values, again, we were projecting about 70% loss for this year. So our revenues are down from the 91 million at the end of this year to we're projecting um, just under 83 million for next year. And the expenditures pretty much stay the same going across because even though we've cut out almost six million, and again that was uh, we had a reduction of our teaching staff by 19, uh, we reduced two people in finance, we have concessions from all of our bargaining units, um, the early retirement incentives. This was the last year in 11-12, so that saves us a million capital outlay. Um, we took some money actually out of our taxes abated line. Now our taxes abated line is. Um, and this is something that just started happening since the property values have started falling. People can go in, or companies, because we're mostly commercial, we have a lot of really large companies in Southfield. They go to the tax tribunal and they ask for their assessments to be lowered. If they win those, what happens is they give that information to the county and the county immediately sends us a bill that we have to pay within 30 days. We have at this time $12 million of outstanding possible liability for that. It's been hitting us at about four to five million a year, so that's what we've been budgeting for is five million a year. Um, we just last month the bill came in at a million six, and I was, you know, really hoping that we had to speak out because there is no time you don't really know when these things are going to happen, so you kind of sit and wait and hope that they're not going to come through or that they get denied, but we have no way of knowing that. So we usually budget for five million, but we took two million out of that line for next year to get a balanced budget. That's how dire things are at this point. Now, if things end up better at the state, you know, if there is any additional money coming there in any way, if the retirement rate is a little bit lower, it's not looking good. But we'll put the money back in the line at that point. Um, right now, the, the retirement rate is being projected at 27%, or they may go with a different calculation altogether, which for us would actually cost us a little bit more. So, but all that's up in the air, so we don't know, so we're going to go with what they originally gave us, which was the 27%. That's up from 24%, and it's a million more in expenses. Um, even though we cut $6 million for 12 13 feet of balance budget, our expenditures went up $4.8 million, and that's because um, we had ARA funds from the federal government, we had edger jobs funds from the federal government, we had a categorical from the state. These were all the one-time monies that they were using to shore up the district as all of this was happening to us. But we're at that cliff now where all that money is dried up and gone, so now all those expenditures go back into the general fund and we have to cover them. So even though we're bringing down our expenses on one hand, other things are happening to bring it right back up on the other hand, and we don't have control over those things. So um, we're asking tonight that you approve the 12-13 adopted budget and we're proposing that, or we're projecting that we'll come up with a fund balance next year of $226,000. That's using the $12 million that will be in the fund balance at the end of 11-12. Uh, we also have a debt retirement fund. We're projecting that we will add to the debt retirement fund, and we're doing that essentially because with the property values the way they are, if those fall down like they did year before last and we don't have enough money, we don't have enough cash in the general fund to even slow the payment to the bond fund. We have to have enough money in there to pay our bond payments. And remember, that can't be totally gold, it's all separate. So that's going to be the same. We'll add to that a little bit. And the food service fund, again, we're projecting that they will make just under $100,000 to add to their fund balance. Which, the good thing about food service funds, because it's another self-maintained fund, we can't transfer money between them. But what they do is, as they have money in their fund balance, they use that to buy things for the cafeteria and for the school. So that the whole thing is self-supporting without us having to put money into it, as we have in the past. So we're asking that you approve the 12-13 operating budget with a projection of 226000 for the 
Hill and the Southfield Parks and Garden Club, the 16th annual Southfield Volunteer Day. The event included improvement projects at Stevenson and Leonard Schools and lots of woods in England Park. Uh, the pro this project was made possible through the generous donations of many community stakeholders and local businesses, which are listed on the report. And we want to uh, thank you all for your uh, support. Uh, we have also report 7A, um, which is a purchasing report. These are items that uh, do not require board action and they do not meet the threshold of uh, the dollar amount that requires us to um, to vote upon this small uh, small dollar pur purchases, but uh, uh, still they're included on that report. And if you just really need to uh, help this issue tonight, you can do that. Okay, and now comes the public participation. Uh, where the public may address the board on matters of concern or interest. Uh, please note that comments are generally limited to three minutes. The board will listen to all comments but may not respond during the meeting. Comments may be referred to an administrator or the superintendent for follow-up. Mm -hmm. uh, as, <laughs> as a matter of fairness, speakers with complaints against individuals are asked not to mention persons by name. Complaints concerning employees should be brought to the attention of school principals or other administrators before coming to the board. Your cooperation is appreciated. And um, when your name is called, please step to the, um, to the podium and state your name and address for the record. And first we have Carol Bartley. Thank 
be any way of qualifying that. If it was mediocre, less than par, we probably wouldn't be here. But we're here because we're concerned, because we have some teachers that really made Allen what it is today. I can say that because one of the teachers that laid off three of my children went through I had six children, one still there now, that have gone through Allen School. Okay, so I know all the teachers from the oldest one there to the to the newest one there. We're very, very concerned. We, we have a real serious problem. I have the backing of 282 signatures. I have the backing of teachers. I have the backing of students, uh, of parents, volunteers. We're just really concerned. Now, we understand what you're saying, but we're voicing our voice in the community, just like Mrs. Burns and Cass said. We're here to voice our concern in the community of Adler School. I don't know what you can do about it, but we're very, very, very upset about it. That's the reason why we came. So we'd like to know if we can, you can address it some kind of way, you can try to make some changes to what you're doing. But we do have some teachers that have really made some significant changes and as well as a, a, a reputation for Adler School. I know my time is up. So. You know, I agree with you, and you can add my name to the 283 and maybe 284. But what we have to understand is that we are losing students, so we're going to lose teachers. And Southfield has, in my opinion, the brightest and the best teachers, not only at Adler, but at all of our schools. And I don't want to lose any of them. But let me ask Mr. Turner, who's our, our HR director, to share with you um, a little bit about how this works. If, it, you know, if I could wave a magic wand, I would. But I'll tell you what's going to take. Those petitions, instead of sending them to his board, you got to get on a bus and go to Lansing with me. You know, we went a couple of months ago. We couldn't get enough parents in this community to ride that bus and go to Lansing. We went. We testified in front of the committee when they were making these cuts. But that is what it's going to take. But I won't get on my soapbox tonight. But I'm going to tell you, I get, a, I get notes from Lansing every day where they're cutting this, they're raising the retirement. Every time we cut, they add something else on that we have no control. And if we continue to lose students, then I'm going to have to lay off more teachers. If I lose students, I'm going to lose teachers. And we're not losing students to districts leaving us to go to the north. They are going to Jackson, Mississippi, where they built a new neosan plant. They're going to Houston, and they're going to um, Dade County, Florida where there are service jobs. So the economy is affecting us also. But David, if you would address that issue of uh, layoff. Thank you. Um, to echo some of the things that the superintendent has indicated and estimated as well, as I sit between the passion of Dr. Wood and I sit between <coughs> Dr. Cook Robinson and I have Debbie, the uh, good news bringer, who <laughs> is in, in, in cabinet. These are not decisions that we want to make. These are not things that we want to make happen. We do not want to lose any of our staff. We, we have some policies and legislation placed upon us where we begin to lose our choice. Uh, prior to uh, legislative changes, we had contract negotiations that dictated how we had layoffs, how we had placement, how we had recall. But the legislators have changed that. They have now made some things prohibited subjects of bargaining. Things I can't even talk about on the table anymore. Placement is one of those items. Seniority has been summarily removed from our process. Um, now, seniority doesn't guarantee that you'll have a great teacher in the classroom, but there's a process that has been followed for many, many years and people got accustomed to it and they understood what was happening, when it would happen, and how it typically would happen in the district. I was charged with crafting a process that does not hold seniority at all in the process, except for a tiebreaker. So when all other things be the same, when we move through qualification, certification, we move through the evaluation of status, of, status of a teacher, we move through the educational accomplishments of a teacher, we can then look at seniority. And only then. And that's if the district agreed to it. It's not even required that a district does seniority at all. But our superintendent and my associate superintendent said we have to have some semblance of the same. Now, in the process of layoffs, because we are governed by the student population in our districts, every district in Southeast Michigan is experiencing similar things like we are. However, 
when you start laying off folks who you had not intended to lay off to begin with, you're going to touch high caliber, highly effective teachers. We had 34 layoffs in our district this year. 34. 34 teachers that we would not choose to lay off. They were performing. All of them not at the same, but we had all of them performing. Now, in two years, as we move through the process that the government has provided for us, we're going to have some decisions to make that we can avoid. A teacher in our district can no longer have two consecutive ineffective ratings. They're automatically terminated next year. Even if they're trying their best and they're showing improvement and they may have a difficult situation, it's without my choice. So we'll be here with some teachers who don't have a choice. Tenure laws are changing where teachers will know what I'm talking about and how it affects them are changing. Our layoffs are governed now by those four criteria I told you. Qualifications and certification. The evaluation of that. The educational accomplishment. And then seniority is type rate. We handle layoffs now by building. That means each building has its own treatment because each building has its own population effect. If we keep it where it's a district-wide effect, where a teacher in Adler is laid off, or just place they didn't go to Grace, and then they didn't go to MacArthur, and then they didn't go to McIntyre. It begins to follow a symbol of seniority, and that's exactly what it would be, but just a horse of a different color. It would be seniority, because you would be moving and displacing another teacher based on seniority. And that's now illegal for us to do. It is not a good thing, and not only teachers, but we affected members of our master staff. We've affected unaffiliated members who again, don't have the same rights that some of the teachers have, but they're affected another thing because we move and we add by our student population. If we have less students, and that makes it show the trend where we've moved from over 10,000 students to where we stand now, with less than 8,000 students. That's a big deal. Now, all is not lost. All is not dark. We will have, and I consider this war, we will definitely have casualties in war. I prepare my staff, I prepare myself, as we continue to look at a budget this year of a loss of $9 million. Next year, $20 million. We have about an $83 million budget. We've got $20 million out of that budget. I told my superintendent, told my wife, I don't know what to do. But we will, and we'll continue to move on, and we'll continue to educate. You know, with the greatness that South Carolina has become accustomed to. Our district is not the same as many other districts that have these same losses. You know, and I can stand and pontificate to you about how great we are, and you all know that because your children are here. We're going to have losses that we can't control. But what can we do? Our part of the we make sure that our rigor is not lost. While there may not be the same teacher that's teaching your child, it will be a highly effective, qualified teacher in the classroom. And some of the things that we're accustomed to, we have to let go of. Not true, I'm not the one that's standing here the subject to layoff at this point. But I'm moved by an annual contract. If this district decides to outsource human resources, I'll show them how to do it. And I'll turn the light out of the That's what I have. There's other questions. Mr. Turner, um, we, again, we know that with the qualified administration that we have, that people are knocking on you on doors as well. And it's, it's very, you know, difficult in these times to say no when you're going to potentially a better situation than what we're facing here. But as you said, we're all in this together. And that's what I respect the most about this, about this entire team. That's what we are. The seven of us, our superintendent and her cabinet, we're a team. And we are not going to fold under the pressure that's being applied to us. We do this out of our love for this community. I mean, this this this, this is your old school teacher. She's your community teacher. Whereas at some at one point you might have seen the teacher riding through town in a horse and buggy. Our, ours just happens to drive a, you know, Cadillac, but you know, <laughs> it's it's the same thing. She's all over town in that in, in that car, and she's been everywhere. 
we're, about, we're going to do our evaluation so we've got a chance to look at the packet of information that she's provided us with the activities from this past year. But it's, it's, it's her dedication that she instills into her staff is what's giving <coughs> us a flow right now. Because I've been here with lesser. I've served with lesser board members. I've served or had or worked with a lesser superintendent. And the lights would have been out already, and we'd have already had an EM in here. The thing that we've committed ourselves to is that will not happen to this community. They're not going to perform a leverage buyout of Southfield Public Schools, bankrupt us, and then come in and sell off our assets because we have plenty of assets here in this, in this community to offer that will not happen. That will not happen, not when this board is in panel. And that's my assurance to this community and each and every one of you sitting here that that will not happen. Yes, it's very difficult and very painful, the decisions that we have to make. But this is in order for us to survive. We have to have something in order to, for this community to survive and come back to because if we allow them to come in and take it over, we're seeing what's going on in other communities. Uh, future meetings, oh, I'm sorry, board matters. Uh, we come to the point where board, board members can share with the community um, information and things they've been involved in. Um, Ms. Katz. Uh, I would like to thank the superintendent, the board, and the cabinet for the beautiful flowers the bouquet you sent me last week after my accident. It was uh, yellow and white lilies with uh, snap dragons and roses. It was absolutely sensational and a surprise. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to report that the expectation is that I will get better. But uh, I am bruised. It will take a few weeks. Thank you again. Thank you. Really quickly, I just want to reiterate it was kind of glazed over earlier that um, this past week we celebrated all of our high school graduations. And as a proud alumni of this district, as you already know, um, I just want to take my hat off to every teacher and principal who at some point touched <coughs> any of those lives who graduated on this past Sunday from Lakeland High and who graduated from UHSA on Thursday. And collectively, we're averaging a good 98% uh, uh, graduation rate for a dismal picture of financial status that we do have. And I think you as parents should be commended for supporting this district and supporting your children and basically not taking any slack, uh, even though we have less to work with. So I just wanted to make sure that went out after all that negativity to just point out that we're still teaching and learning in Southwood Public School. Thank you. Um, we're saying the same thing. We're on the same thing. Um, we're preaching to the choir. Corporations pay lobbyists to get their messages across. We have to vote and lobby ourselves. Go to Lansing, write letters, go to Washington. I've been on this board for about three years now, and I'm President Buchanan has been on it longer than, than we have, about seven years. And that, it's no fun to cut budget. It's no fun. Uh, I think the number's more like 75 million that we've cut out since he's been on, on board. So it looks like we have to continue to cut. And as treasurer, I don't like to, to cut budget. Especially when we have a fine group of people, teachers, administrators, Superintendents that are doing an outstanding job, I'd rather pay them more money. If we don't pay them more money, someone else is going to offer more. Like the Steinbrenner model, he believes you know you can pay to buy a winning team. Well, Southfield Public Schools has a winning team, and the business model is different because they're saying, "Hey, we'll, we'll take." because I continue to lead this district. I don't like that. I, I, I don't like that. So I'm going to commit to you. This is an election year. August 7th is the primary
primary election in Fort Worth, congressional district race here in this community. General election, come January, I don't care who's in the White House, I invite my colleagues, I'm going to Washington, and I'm going to go to the presidential inauguration, one of those events that he shows up, and ask for more money for education. There's only a handful of politicians that truly get that picture of education and how it's not properly funded. And after I leave the presidential inauguration, I'm going to go to the Senate Department. I'm going to visit with Mr. Levin, and I'm going to visit with whoever holds the seat that Debbie Stabenow holds next, and deliver the same message. You know, I'm going to go to the U.S. Congress person, whoever that person is that comes out of this district, with the same message. But I'm going to give them that message now. And the president, last weekend, delivered that message to some potential candidates that were already. So that's what it takes. It takes us jointly delivering that message. So that's my commitment. And, and I, I, you know, I, I don't like to see these kinds of things. I mean, it's a great gesture. And I'd rather be giving it back to the superintendent. Hey, we, we're going to pay you an additional 6%. It's our 50 earth. That's the American way. Anyway, a um, couple of things. We recently lost a parent. Uh, her name is uh, Candace Smith. And Ms. Smith was one of those parents that I met um, three years ago over at Levy Middle School. And, you know, it's a partnership. It takes parents, teachers, uh, administrators, the community. Well, Ms. Smith is one of those parents that uh, really went out of her way <coughs> to make things happen over at Levy. The STEM program. Got a child at University High School and one that just graduated from Lady. Now, some of the people here in this room actually helped us get that band to where it was today. We took kids that had never, most had never played an instrument in their life. Gave them an instrument, taught them how to play it, put them in competition. And superintendent, I think, they showed this district what good leadership can do. Not only did they take, number one, their first year, they took, I think, practically every event that they entered this past uh, spring in, in Florida. I mean, at major accounts, major accounts. Well, this parent was one of those people that committed time and effort and money to make that happen to that family. And I'd like to just take a moment of silence to remember life of Ms. Candace Thank you. Superintendent, Madam Superintendent's got her evaluation coming up. It's a great year. I don't know how you can you just do it. I really don't. Some, somewhere down the line, you're going to hit the wall. But I'm going to be there to catch you, hopefully. <laughs> Great year. 98% uh, graduation rate at the traditional high schools of Southfield Lake and Southfield High. Uh, but the really uh, coup d'etat this year was at University High School of uh, The first year that they had graduates. And uh,